Hey everybody and welcome back for another episode of the Google Back. Google I'm Back. Riley, here with Google Black Back. Wolf and uh, Google Back Alpaca Patrol. Google Back. Google Back. Google Back. Google Back. <laughs> you guys wouldn't understand. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, it's another one of those. I just understand. Rob just thought I said a thing that I didn't say. And <laughs> yeah. He came no, no. We gotta leave the intrigue and the mystery there. You know. You <laughs> he can't... said he said he'll go back, and it really sounded like he said Google Back. Google Back. <laughs> Google Back. <laughs> Google Back. <laughs> We we have a good time here on that. You <laughs> really don't. We're already having a better time than last episode. Let's yeah, be honest. That was, that was a really boring episode. That oh, one's already yeah. up, right? Yeah, maybe maybe there was you some key know? missing link there. Yeah, uh, or something. I don't know. Oh no. Yeah, your shitty ass Viscopa Guild Mage. No, we like yeah. really forced out the recording. Is what happened. We were all sleepy. Yeah. And Talked about Bloodborne, and we all said things we didn't mean. I think. Oh, uh, that's never a good thing. I, I meant what I said. I thought it looked. I thought. I think it looks really good. We all said things we didn't mean. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the so, air Now, Bloodborne is out. Now it's been out for a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, it was out last time too, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. It? yeah. Wait, I thought. Oh, I guess it was. You missed one. That's right. I was playing Bloodborne when you guys were recording. That's you why were, you, you were Bloodborne. literally playing Bloodborne. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, game's real good. Yep, uh, it is. It is very good, and I've actually played it now too. Last time I hadn't. That's true. Yeah, I was just talking shit about it for no reason. Mm -hmm. I will say though, it has some of the strangest design choices I think I've ever seen in a game ever. Mm. But like, to, to to give this a quick is a no spoiler zone, so just be aware that we're not going to spoil you. Yeah. But Austin will find ways to say things anyway that aren't spoilers. Yeah, of course. Uh, but anyway. Uh, it the the bonfire mechanic right comes makes a comeback. They're lanterns um, now. Lanterns. Yeah, they're lanterns now. But they have the same function. Uh, they warp you back to the hub world. Uh, the nexus we call that. The nexus. I don't and, know. What uh, you can warp anywhere from from your hub world. You can warp anywhere to any lantern you've lit. Uh, but you can't warp from any lantern you've, you a lantern you've lit to another lantern. Mm. So you have to go through two loading screens to warp. And that's a real problem if you've been paying attention to Bloodborne news, because the loading screens can be anywhere from 20 to 40 seconds long. Um, and if yeah. you weren't paying attention, you should Google back. Google back! <laughs> Google back! But, uh, it's, it's weird that the, you, you wouldn't think that, you know, hey, maybe in order, we have this loading screen issue that's going to cause a lot of problems on release. Maybe we can lessen the amount of loading screens that they have to go through by making you be able to warp between lanterns. It's, no. It's, well, they're just going to make it so they just patch out the loading time, right? That's what they're saying they're going to do. That is that the, patch is that not is coming. Do we know when they're going to patch out all the loading times? Because I want to play it at that point. No, um, there's a patch coming first. It's going to fix a couple of game-breaking bugs that were occurring. Um, oh. There was a certain key that you need that you, uh, if you uh, initiate any kind of uh, co-op play, PvP or uh, cooperative against a boss or whatever, uh, the key disappears, and you can't continue through the game. Oh, but I love keys. Yeah, keys and so they, they, they're have patching them that anymore? out. Oh. But, yeah, and then they said they're going to fix the loading screen issue. They should fix the loading screen issue right before they, de like, deliver the game into the stores where people buy them. Yeah, that would have been a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would love that. Like, even if they delayed it by another couple weeks, loading times would be better. Mm -hmm. Also... <laughs> If you use a lantern and warp back, it resets the enemies, but you can't rest at a lantern to reset the enemies. So it's just another loading screen. Oh, two it's another screens. two forced loading screens. If you want to reset the enemies, yeah. And it's weird because they make you farm a lot, so you need to do that quite a lot. Um, I was going to say, why would anyone want to do that? Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, it, it, I haven't seen it personally, but that sounds shitty. Yeah, it, it's just weird because it tampers what is otherwise a fantastic game. Um, it looks... It, like, like I said on the last episode, it looks like Miyazaki's Dark Souls 2. That's what that game looks like to me. Yeah. It's, it, it definitely... You can tell there was a lot of effort put into the aesthetic and the whole Dark Souls-y feels that it takes on. It's, it's very... Mm -hmm. I, I was really... Like, there, wasn't, oh, there was maybe like one or two bosses that I was unhappy about the design. The rest were like incredible. Like, they were just amazing. Nick, you gotta discard some stuff, huh? Don't worry Nick, about you, it. you're having a bad time. You, you I, uh, seem like you have a lot of land. Don't worry about it. In your hand. You might have a lot of land in your hand. Uh, you could start a band. You think you're a man. And you could take a stand. 
And you guys are real funny with all those rhymes you're making. Yeah, <laughs> rhyme makers. That's trying to call reprimand us. me. Don't reprimand they, me. Wait, they call you rhyme makers now. <laughs> rhyme makers, the mm, the takers. time makers, the, 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 the laugh the makers, love takers, the, the twist, the takers of love, the the bakers, cookies, the twist bakers, the twist bakers. Yeah. Do you make pretzels. Uh, do, you make, uh, do you make pretzels? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. What? Uh, what? Yeah. Check it. Oh. What is happening right now? <laughs> uh, we decided that we're going to actually end the ma magic series and turn it into a, uh, a freestyle hip hop series. Freestyle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm down with that. Yeah. Do you guys know if it's the Millennium of Aftermath or the Willennium? I'm really not sure which we landed I on. I believe it's yet. the uh, Jilgrenium. Uh, it's the Google Beckenium. Well, yeah. it's important that I know because Dr. Dre said that there ain't going to be nothing after that. Right, right. So I wanted to make sure that if it is not the Millennium and it's actually the Millennium of Aftermath, right. that I understand that I need to be prepared for that. This is a pretty serious thing. Oh, no, that's fair. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That's understandable. Yeah. Um, Man, I wish I had done this last turn. What did you do? I, I just did a dumb thing that I shouldn't have done, cost myself a land for no reason. Damn it, Nick. Nick! Eck. 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 Oh, you know what? I guess I could still do it this way. You know, like it's, weird that we're, it's weird that we're... Uh, oh, that's oh weird. you should have done it to the other guy. Yeah, no, it's, it's all right. I got it. Oh, wow. That's oh, okay. weird. <laughs> I get it. I couldn't have because it's minus two and that has four, so that wouldn't have killed it. That's true, that but dead weight lasts does. forever. But yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know you had the tribute to hunger. That was definitely a better play. Thank you. But I was, I was going to say the whole Nick thing we were doing there. There's a YouTube video guy, uh, Film Cow, and What's he has a... Oh, that, that would be a nice thing to kill. And he, there's a video where he has a character who has a friend named Nick, and he pretty much does the same thing all the time. He's like, Nick! So <laughs> it's a good, cool little... There you go. Uh, all right, may, I think I missed part of that. Maybe I need to Google back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to Google have back. We, have we established what Google back means with that? Then? Well, I mean, the, there was the original meaning, but it, it that was really pass contained. You on something important, some bit of information that you need to go back and refer to Google with, yeah. and you just, you Google back. Yeah, you Google, Google back. back. Okay. You go, okay, Google, Google back. <laughs> Google back. <laughs> Let me Google back for you. <laughs> Four out. <laughs> Sorry. I, <laughs> I tried to slur the Google back and it up. I don't know. I think it you never slur the Google back, Austin. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Oh, we have fun here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, we have no fun here. Zero. It's the point of magic. It's yeah, no fun. Have... The fun ends here. The fun ends here. Pretty much anti magic, anti mage, anti mage, anti mage. That's ick. a Dota. It is a Dota, yeah. No, that's, that's it's one true. Dota. It's one well, singular that's... Dota. I've been trying to add up how many increments of Dota like add up to a full Dota, and okay. it's like too many for me to count. Oh, that's it's, fair. Yeah, it's, not, it's complicated mathematics that goes into that calculation. Your axe is the steel of dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, your axe is the steel of dark. I know that. It's the steel of dark. Man, Nick, he's kind of opening himself up here, you know. Google I don't know about that. I think he's doing his best to uh, destroy the one unholy terror that is you. <laughs> it's, he's got a good point. Take advantage of uh, of his openness. How little health you have? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> That's a good thing to take advantage of, in my opinion. I'm going to lose. Google back. No, you're not. You're going to get down you're to 6 health, and then you're going to come back and win the game. He's already at half health. Like, he's yeah, already he's gone back, back up to half health. Son of a bitch. I don't know he's why. He's the only man that I know in Magic that can just Google back at will. <laughs> <laughs> I went ahead and I Googled me. Just Google back. <laughs> Google it forward. <laughs> the less of the word you actually say, the funnier it is. <laughs> if you just kind of trail off the whole three last letters. Google back. <laughs> That's like that's like where Yoda trains, Gugaba. He's, tra <laughs> he's really trained. They're trained. I can't. He's a trainer, Gugaba. <laughs> we should just turn this magic series into Ubi, where you just say fucking gibberish the whole time. <laughs> oh, Grandpa! Oh, the boo go 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 boo go. Ziggy ziggy boo nom nom. Starfire. So so so. Zuki. Why do I get Star Wars voice when I do that? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. 
Maybe I need to Google back. You no! Know? I need to Google back. <laughs> I want my Google back, Google back, Google back. Sorry. Yeah, you better be. You know when you said that, my eyes lit up. I'm like, this is this is what we're going to talk about today. Is, <laughs> is Google back. Google yeah, back. It, it's becoming more and more obvious what... Uh... Well, that's real. Yeah, it's a real spaghetti of a meme. It's a real spaghetti of a meme. <laughs> <laughs> Spaghetti. Ah, spaghetti. Spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti. Mm. spaghetti. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm done. You need to done. Google back. Google back. I'm Google back. Google back. Google back. Google back. You know, you need to stop. Nah. Hey, what's new, guys? Anything happening in the worlds of you? Uh, no. Been sucking dicks. Have you? Yeah. Right. Fair. Lots of dicks. Man. You enjoying that or? Kind of like just doing it. You're just doing it. Just doing just it. To pass the time. Chilies, baby smack pibs. Oh, wow. Baby smack pibs. <laughs> Sometimes baby smack pibs. Oh, he's remember. dead. Yeah, 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 he's gone. When did that just happen? I killed him. He killed attacked him. me a bunch of times. Killed I him dead. I didn't think it was even possible anymore. I, you guys overinflate the amount of times I win. Because of the way that I win. I don't know. I had to nope. leave myself open to attack the entire time, and now I'm probably fucked. Just to just to like keep your health at a reasonable level. And well, now I probably lost. Zero is not reasonable, though. Fuck. Well, yeah, but I got you down to six, and then you were up to ten, and you're gonna get more if I didn't stop you. No, I didn't have anything. You're yeah. gonna get more if he didn't stop you, though. And you had the angelic accord bullshit. Yeah, I actually had four of those in my hand. Oh, good! <laughs> you it wasn't have... helping me, though, because they were all very expensive, and I could only play one a turn, so... Yeah, that's fair. Angelic Accordion. I would, have I really would like an Angelic other... Accordion. What? You play really it in, like, like little halos shoot accordion. out of it or something? Yeah. The accordion's a really cool, like, idea for an instrument, right? You got this, like, yeah. air generating, kind of like what they used to stoke a fire. But it also is harnessed for the musical tones. Mm -hmm. I just wish it didn't sound like fucking the worst. <laughs> yeah, I mean? also wish it didn't sound like fucking the worst. It sounds terrible unless it's I in a like very it. specific way. I don't know. I it, it works in some scenarios, but other times it's just like, man, this would sound better on any other instrument. Uh, it's like bagpipes. It's you ever like, look at the end of it? Like, see how many keys there are? It's so yeah, cool it's, looking. it's a very cool instrument. It's real cool. I mean, the instrument's cool. Playing it's not well, cool. Which would win in a fight, bagpipes or, or that? What kind of fight? Is it a what's the most annoying fight or what's, what's the largest what's thing? What's the most interesting of these two? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the accordion is more interesting. But the bagpipes have a lot of lore behind them. They have a lot of like meaning it's, and it's kind of honor. Here's a question. What about the Schmelschmordian? The Schmelschmordian? Yeah. I'm not interested in that instrument. You don't like the Schmelschmordian? I'm going to have to take no, a quick I think Google. you need to Google back. Yeah. I might Google back a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah, I'd can. recommend that. I recommend checking yourself and then preventing that from wrecking yourself. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a fair point. Yeah. We say shrekking yourself now. Oh, I'm sorry. What about T-rexing yourself? Shriggity shrekking yourself. Or is it T-rexing yourself? Mm -hmm. What about a Shrek the new Shrek come out? I'm yourself. freaking tired of Shrek not coming out. They already had the final Shrek. It was called the last Shrek. That's not true. It's completely There's true. There's a fourth Shrek coming out. That's not true. Yeah, there is. Didn't they have Look it four up. already? Or is there only three? I don't know, but there's at least four total. I remember definitely the, the, the most previous Shrek was advertised. There's one in the production final. coming out this year. We looked it up on the New NLSS. Shrek movie 2015. Right, I'm going to be I lost. angry. Goodbye. Shrek 5 sequel in the works. I hate you. I knew I was right because we already looked it up. I wasn't kidding. But it's five, not four. I didn't know what number it was. I forgot. I just needed to Google back. <laughs> <laughs> Google back. Google back, baby. Oh, Shrek's total box office is Google 2. Back billion. Shrek 2 was one of the biggest opening movies ever in the box office in history. Was it? Yes, really was. Good lord. That's how big of an influence Shrek is these days. Ugh. I don't think he's held it, unfortunately. Like, the whole Shrek franchise really can't keep up with the motion of the ocean, but they try. Oh, man. Well, 
Here goes nothing. They announced it last year that it was getting another movie. Does that have haste? Yeah, it does. It has Not base. Bad. Oh god, doing? this website that I went to has an ad that takes over the whole screen and plays a video. I love uh, videos. You Not flushed in my dust. I yeah, you. I had that was. Do. That was your. I don't final think I. I don't think I. Yeah, that was the last chance. The I. I don't. Uh, I don't think I would have killed you even if I. I did hit you with that, though. So. I'm just being sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. I can't ever predict when someone's gonna die in this game, so like I want to make sure all the odds are with me. That's fair. Yeah, you would have been down to, uh, like, seven health. That's yeah, it's hard cool. to say. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, don't I mean, know. after, it's pretty easy to say. Math is a very objective, you know, thing, so. Yeah. Math is a very objective. 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 Uh, very I didn't get enough lands. And also, I got Quest for the Goblin Lord too late. I wish I got that before I got... I had three of the, um... What too are they late, called? Mate. Pringles Commands. Yeah, cool. Pringles Commands. Pringles <laughs> Commands. Kringle? Kringle, 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 Chris Pringles, Pringle Chris commands. Kringles, Pringle, Ding, Bingle, Wingles. Oh, my game just quit. Oh, <laughs> oh good! Magic. Why did that happen? <laughs> it happens sometimes. It does. It tends to, yeah. Why did that just happen? I, I wonder if my frozen. footage is alive. Yeah, I hope yeah, so. Mine, mine froze. There it goes. All right, so my game just crashed, but it's back now. So yeah, now we can have the proper let's talk on the menu screen part. <laughs> All right, hey, nice. Yeah. Oh. Weird. Yeah, that was very. I mean, we were just saying like Chris Kringle's Pringle commands. You didn't miss anything. Yeah, anymore. we did say Chris Kringle's Pringle command. That's pretty much all we did for those Actually, moments. Actually, for those that missed that part, you could just Google back. Yeah, you <laughs> might want to like, Google back. You'll um, be fine. Just then, take a good old Google. Yeah, get a Google back and then you just you imagine if Google releases something called Google back and it's like <laughs> it's like the time capsule. It's like the one the thing that lets you look at old websites. What's that called? Uh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, no, yes, called, yeah, but... no, no, that's uh, your mom's dirty <laughs> asshole. Oh my god, I'm pretty Rob. sure. I'm <laughs> pretty sure that's what it's called. <laughs> Robert! <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> you know he's serious when he's using your full name. <laughs> Robert G. Billingsworth. <laughs> I got that from Malls. She knows yeah. how to, like, put that shit in order. She does, you know? yeah, yeah. No, when, I, when I have my full <laughs> name spoken by anyone, it's just like, oh god, I'm five years old again. Yeah, this is awful. My parents said the whole middle name thing. And it, it, oh, what's your middle name? Uh, it's James. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is that funny? Well, no, because I'm. <laughs> it's just it's such a stark difference from your name Austin that it seems strange that they would choose to use your name James. Like James, get over here! It's like what? I think me. I, I I think it was named after like a great grand some shit. I don't know. I don't. Really the great know. grand James. some shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were gonna. Apparently, they were gonna use it to call me AJ, but they never did. So. Oh, thank God, because I hate that name. Yeah, I don't, I'm not yeah. a fan of that. I'm, I'm sorry, like, any AJ. Anyone named yeah. AJ in the audience, but. And, yeah, and I, really I fucking hate names. Sorry. <laughs> I fucking hate. Actually, our, I just our, hate AJs as people in general. Yeah, There's our very culture. avid viewer AJ McCarron is real sad right now. <laughs> I really can't wait for him to post in the comments with a dot 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 <laughs> sad face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually had like a bad experience with an AJ in elementary school, so I think I just have that still stuck yeah, in my head. I had that too with a college guy, so. Fucking AJ. Yeah. Why do they have to be so rude to us? Why you gotta be so rude? You know? Is that how that's so, Yeah. I watched a movie that maybe you guys can comment on. Uh, it's called Big Hero 6. I thought you were gonna uh, say Google back for a second there. And I should have. <laughs> kind of sad that you didn't say that, but yeah, go on. Yeah, so I, does anyone. Have any familiarity it. with yeah, this movie? I've not seen it. I've saw it. It's like a DreamWorks movie, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not not the Pixar because it was kind of shitty. Decent reviews, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it did really well. But okay, so here's my thing. I thought it was fine visually. It was actually very engaging visually, and the premise was kind of neat. But also, it was just really, really shallow, and the writing had a lot of holes in it, in my opinion. I know a lot of people really love this movie, so I don't want to fire too many shots at it, but... Fire like, the whole barrage. No, I, 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 I agree. I mean, it, it had... The premise was interesting. Um, the execution, not as interesting. It's just sort of a... It's weird, too, because, it, like, I have a... Although I guess I guess it's not conflicting. I was gonna say the, w one of my problems with uh, Frozen is that it doesn't have a traditional villain narrative, 
I've still never uh, seen Frozen. Frozen's not. It's, it's good. The movie's not great. <laughs> it's 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 good. It's it's not great, but it's it's good. And the music's oh man. The music's Fantastic. great, but then it just stops halfway through the movie. They just stop yeah. making. It's like it stops being a musical like halfway through. And there's so many moments in the in like act like the end of Act Two and Act Three where like oh so here's the next musical number right and they just don't do it and it's weird. We had a Frozen talk before. I want to talk about this other movie. Now. Yeah, no. Well, so Big Hero Six, I would say that the villain narrative is almost like too of too much of a like a tropish traditional villain right. narrative, um, and in the same time, it it. It's a little bit. Um, it's just it. I, I don't want. I don't want to say what I'm going to say because it would be basically. A it was spoiler. shallow Marvel storyline. Like it just. Yeah. It did predictable things, and it then it was very exploding at the end. And I was like, "This isn't necessary. This is supposed to be more cute and nuanced." Yeah. Yeah. I thought. It, it felt like what I was getting from the marketing is that's what it was catering toward, but it ended up being exactly the opposite. Big Hero Six, by the way, is a Disney movie. Um, Disney. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, it looked like DreamWorks. Yeah. I think that's what they were going for. Yeah. Disney's been making some DreamWorks it's, movies it's, lately. It's it's weird, because, like, a lot of the stuff is kind of, like... A lot of the stuff, especially with that movie and just Disney recently, has been very markety. In that, like, yeah. they created the world of Big Hero 6 to appeal to Chinese... Um, uh, to a Chinese audience... Um, and it wasn't it felt... Japanese? No, no. It's it's supposed to be. It's it's to appeal to to the Chinese market. Isn't well, it's Asian. Japanese you said the world. you said the Chinese. No, no. I said to the Chinese audience. Oh. Um, okay. But but I, also it, it, but kind of filled up because Disney movies uh, have been doing very well in that market in in the whole Asian uh, market. So they set this world in a like you know Asian inspired future. Well. There's all, so there's other elements, though, that I wasn't really sure. I couldn't figure out where this all came into play, but there was, like, a manga at some point, yeah. right? There was a lot of, was, like, really fan fairy fan What was the origin stuff. of this story? Was it actually just a movie, or did it start somewhere else and then become a movie? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. Right, and I couldn't figure that out, which is probably a bad sign. Yeah. It's, I mean, it was fine. I think it has a lot of potential for, like... Uh, if it if it becomes a series, which I think is their it intention, will. yeah, that's that, that's that's what that's what it seems like is their intention, and so it has potential to be good if they do a little bit less on the shallow front and a little bit more on the like let's let's not do a cookie cutter movie and just make a you know something that's interesting. That's what I would like, but Big Hero Six was alright. There were some moments in it that were supposed to be very emotionally touching. And yeah. I thought about it, and I was like, so those fell so flat for me. And then I thought about Up, and I was like, I was actually in tears in the first five minutes of Up. So, like, they just really botched the emotional connection, I thought, at I, least in my that's, opinion. I think it's been happening a lot in movies lately for me, is that they expect you to be attached to some character, but they do such a poor job of, of relating you yeah. to the character that when that character has something bad happen to them or someone close to them, you're just like, oh, I mean, It, it has to sucks. do with, like... Basically, movies these days, a lot of the time, in, in the movies that you're speaking of, tend to be very lazy about character development. Because right. people don't like character development. They like explosions and action and hooks. I'm the opposite. I agree. I'm the same way. And, and when you don't properly develop a character, then the viewer doesn't get any kind of actual attachment to that character. And therefore none of the consequences really matter because at the end of the day like you're watching a film so none of the con they're all fictional characters none of the consequences matter in the first place so you have to simulate an attachment to the character right. through character development and a lot of movies just kind of you know yada 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 through character development right and it feels time. disingenuous and kind of disrespectful to the viewership to treat them like they don't even deserve to have some kind of connection emotionally to the characters in the movie yeah that's well, like that's what storytelling is I, for me. I, I will i will say that you shouldn't spend too much time like conflating or not conflating but like comparing modern disney to pixar because it's just like a whole they're two separate worlds like pixar up until recently since they've been bought by disney um they didn't really concern themselves with like sequels to things or like 
you know, right. not really concern themselves with, hey, there's a market for this. Let's make a movie about this, you know? That's Pixar... exactly what I hate about all the things in big industries. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. And, and, and that's honestly, that's kind of what Big Hero 6 felt to me is that it was like, oh, superheroes, uh, Asian market, uh, you know, like fucking robots, big giant robots. Right. It was, it was aligning demographics to create a thing that will appeal to the most people in those demographics. And yes. it was kind of just fitting them together to sell yeah. it. And that was, yeah, and that, that definitely came off. Uh, and I, it was, like I said, I, I thought it was all right. It was, it was Dude, the stoner decent. character made me want to claw my eyes out. I couldn't yeah. stand it. Although, that guy's played by the dude in Silicon Valley, and that guy's awesome. In which, Silicon which guy Valley. in Silicon Valley? The, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the long-haired, fat oh, dude. Oh, Curly? Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's, he's great. He's amazing, yeah. Look, I'm not judging him as a person, just that character was so badly written and so freaking stereotypical, it, it bothered was. me. Yeah, it, it really was, yeah. But um, he yeah. contributed basically nothing to the whole movie. I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as far as other movies are concerned, though, um, last night I watched Interstellar with Maul. Oh, I want to watch that. It's just three hours long, so, so I can never find good. time. Oh, dude, you should just you should just because Maul. Spoil anything for I, me. I, I won't spoil like anything, but Maul was extremely people. hesitant and resistant to watching the film until I wore her down last night, and I was like yeah let's just watch interstellar and we ended up watching interstellar and she thought she was gonna hate it because she doesn't like space things and all this other jazz she was like in tears throughout the entire movie basically nice it's the, it's it's an emotional it's film movie. It, it is I, like yeah it's everything i want in a sci-fi movie with everything i love about emotional dramas like it, it's it's just such a good movie like i think it's honestly it's kind of underrated because a lot of people are like, ah, oh, space movie. It was okay. Well, it's it's a fantastic movie. I think. I, I think the the problem with Interstellar, uh, and this isn't a spoiler. This isn't a spoiler. But Nick, cover your ears for a second. Yeah, I okay? don't even think I want to know problems with it because I want to come to my own conclusion. I, I know that's that's why I don't want I don't want you to hear this. All right. So I'll like, cover your ears. And, and, yeah, and I'll I'll yell for you when we come back, and I'll just whisper this. All right. All right. Here we go. The thing about Interstellar is that. <laughs> Act three was kind of bad. Like, it was kind of really bad. And it it kind of soils the rest of the film because the rest of the film is so good. And then act three comes along and it's like, mm, yeah, that I, 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 I want to have a discussion about that, but I don't want to leave Nick out for too yeah, long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nick, you come back now. Nick, Nick, come back. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. exactly, yeah. So We're I said, gonna go on longer, I said but my, I feel like we, yeah, yeah. we didn't want to just leave you out for a huge yeah. portion of the episode. Yeah, that so that's fun. that's that's what I felt about it. But, 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 movie's great. I, I, I really liked it. Um, and, and Maul really liked it, too. Is, I'm so. glad that I went into it without looking up anything about it, too. Me, too. A, Me, too. Um, I have really looked up much about it's good it don't yeah don't it. you don't you don't, don't want to don't don't look at i would honestly it. recommend if you have time go fucking watch it tonight if you can it's yeah just oh, i want to i just don't have time because of yeah. work but so yeah. after i watched big hero six then i watched that uh, somebody recommended because i felt kind of disenfranchised by that movie and i tweeted and then somebody's like hey you should watch uh song of the sea and i did mm -hmm. and that was fantastic I don't that was heard so of that. much better what was that, that? I, well, I don't remember the name of the guy that made it, but it's uh, it's basically a movie it's... about Irish folklore. It's an animated movie, and it reminded me a little bit of Studio Ghibli. Oh, uh, yeah, I wanted to see that really bad. It, was that good? It's really good. Oh, I want to see that. Oh, yeah. It looks beautiful. Yeah, that, I remember, I saw that. I, I've been trying to get Maul to watch that with me, actually. <laughs> it's legit good. Like, it's it's a solid movie. Yeah, that looked And really it has good. all of the freaking wonder and, like, legit actual Irish stuff that never gets represented in movies, mm -hmm. like, faithfully. Mm -hmm. And it has it all properly done. That's cool. And it's not their first movie either, so now I need to watch all the rest of their movies because I need <laughs> to see everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that, high, that, high that, recommendation that. for that one. If you can okay. watch Song of the Sea, get it in a Blu-ray if you can, or whatever the highest resolution because the art in it is stunning. Uh, oh, I can here, actually just watch it on Amazon. That's awesome. Here's a high recommendation uh, that, honestly, Nick might like it. Actually, both of you might like it, but it it's actually just a fucking brilliant film, uh, is Birdman. Um, oh, yeah. I, have a kind of well, I know that. you said you wanted to, me to watch that, and I will. Yeah, you, you, you should. I... I, I don't know it, it's it's weird because it's hard to recommend because 
there's a lot of technical aspects and and if you can appreciate technical aspects of cinema then it's it's fucking jaw dropping um and then on top yeah, of that well, i don't <laughs> right and and we and, had that talk you were like showing me these long shots and i'm like yeah that's cool they could have just ran a freaking hose through the ceiling well like, all right that's whatever <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to I'm not going to spoil what I mean I'm about the technical... Okay. No, 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 that's fine. But, but I, I don't want to spoil the the thing that has... The, like, the main underlying... Uh, or, honestly, like, like the major technical feat that that movie accomplishes. Yeah, they got um, a bird to be a man. Yeah, it's it was amazing. amazing. Yeah, they got this bird who was a man. It's uh, they, it was it was hard booking. It's like him. had a full boyfriend, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. basically that's what it's the whole about. Yeah, pigeon dating part of it. It's really really sexy. But basically. but uh, like minus the technical aspect, which I hope people will be awed by when they see it. Um, the the like general synopsis that doesn't have anything to do with plot is it's a movie about a stage play. Wait, no, it's it's a stage play that's a movie about a stage play, and. And it doesn't sacrifice the medium. Because so many times when you see an adaptation of a stage play turned into film, like, it, it, they just, they sacrifice the medium of film into, in, in trying to get you to have that experience of theater. But the truth is, that's like, you can't replicate the feeling of theater in film you just can't the 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 mediums are completely different the energy is just totally different and i don't mean that in like a spiritual sense i mean just like it, it's just it's a completely different experience so usually when they do stage plays adapted into film and this isn't even a stage play adapted into film it just is a stage play that happens to be a film it's hard to explain but but Usually when they do it, they just they just kill cinematography and they throw away a lot of things and, and it, and it kind of kills everything. But this movie doesn't do that. It, it In fact, it revels in the medium of film while still really having that feel of theater. And it's... Mm. I mean, it's I really don't understand brilliant. what that means, but I guess I just have to watch it then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you guys ever gone to like a, like a stage play, like an actual theatrical yeah. piece i'm not a big fan of it honestly I, I can't even remember the last one i saw i think i've seen like two but i don't remember either of them mm, they were yeah, like school related kid. so yeah i always wanted to go see cats when i was little but then it closed Cats is. <laughs> my teacher Some used bullshit. to brag that he was in cats and he was in cats was he magical mr mistopheles or what i don't know i i i, I saw cats when i was a little kid and <laughs> I I, and that answer i didn't oh, i don't know <laughs> i saw cats when i was a little kid i didn't like it very much but, you know, maybe you should, maybe you should I just, just like it. cats, so I figured I'd like that. Cats are cool, yeah. Cats are all right. Bro, what did you think of the movie Moulin Rouge? Didn't like it. Why? You know how I said, like... <laughs> what... <laughs> this is my favorite starts to Rob explanations. <laughs> you know, well, you know, you know how I said, like... When a stage play is adapted into film, they sacrifice... This is why I brought it up, yes. Yes, they, yeah. they sacrifice the the cinematographic techniques and, and, and film oh, as like a medium. I like how fast you said that. Because I don't think it's a word. That's, that's why I say that so quickly is because I don't totally think it's an actual word. word. Yeah, but it, doesn't, it just doesn't sound it's right. It's like an onomatopoeia. Yeah. Cinematographic. 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 But anyway, so um, so when... when and and they sacrifice the medium. That's what Moulin Rouge did. That's like a perfect example of, yeah, fuck film. This is like we're we're hip. We're a stage play. Fuck you. Film sucks. And it's just like, eh, why am I why am I watching? And now that's gonna get people real angry because people are are in love I, with Moulin. I Rouge. don't get a lot of Moulin Rouge. I didn't like the first half of it, but by the end, somehow I liked it, and I don't really understand when or how that happened, because I've never had such a split opinion about a movie. Some honestly. of the songs are good. Um, it's just, it's the, it's it's honestly, it's the, the appropriation director. of pop songs, it was straight up trash for me. It just made me so angry. Yeah. Yeah. It was like watching Glee, and I know that's probably a thing too that people love, but I just don't get it. It's just, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's the director. I really don't like him. People are in love with him. Th this is just personal preference. What happens, preference. though, for people like who him. love him? I don't get what happens for those people. Eh, 
it, well, it's a, it's Baz Luhrmann, and so he did like Shakespeare in Love, and he did uh, most recently the Great Great Gatsby, which I also really didn't like. Uh, or I'm sorry, it wasn't Shakespeare in Love; it was Romeo and Juliet. Um, uh, he he just the hardcore he one where they're like gang members, like shooting at each other. Uh, yeah. Yes. You know which one I'm talking yes, about, right? Yes. Yeah. No, that's him. That's that's the. I watched that. Movie. I really didn't like that. Yeah, it's it's real bad. It's real bad. In, in <laughs> we watched opinion, it in yeah. English class in high school. It was really yeah. Strange. Yeah. I, yeah. We, they forced us to watch that too, and it's just like, just give me a fucking recording of an actual like real reading of fucking Romeo and Juliet because it's ten yeah. times better than this garbage. And that's and and there, that's actually a perfect example of what I was saying. That movie, Romeo and Juliet, is what I hate about adaptations of screen of, of stage plays into film. Because it just doesn't translate like that. It doesn't translate one-to-one. -one. It's a lot harder to translate one-to-one -one the stage play medium to film than a lot of other mediums, honestly. Like, even comic books, I think, go better one-to-one -to, -one to film than, than stage plays do. Um, I should watch more movies. I can never... Participate in these discussions because I never watched any movies. <laughs> but Birdman, watch Birdman because I, I kind of I want to. It looks interesting. I like Harvey Birdman, so it can't be too much worse. Birdman, Birdman. They should make a Space Ghost movie. Coast I to agree. coast. Yeah. I think I've made that joke on Magic in the same way with the same context. Well, when you say have... Space Ghost, you have to you say have Coast to Coast. Yeah. You have just, to. Yeah. It's just required. But um, but yeah, no. Bird Birdman, I honestly like. That's one of the most well-made films that I've seen in a long time, and it was it was very impressive, both technically and honestly, like just the performances were awesome. I mean, Michael Keaton was super fucking good in that movie, and Edward Norton's in it. Emma Stone, um, it's. It's real good. Can you can you guys believe that the new Star Wars comes out this year? Yeah, well, that's gonna be interesting. I I, I just I, I thought about it a couple days ago. I looked it up and I was like, that's coming out in December. It's this year, new Star yeah. Wars. I I hope that's good. Yeah, I mean, I think we've talked about it before. I think me and Nick were in the same boat. We don't really like Star Wars that much. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm still extremely interested because I, I, yeah, when you have a name like Star Wars, I mean, you gotta yeah. you got wait. Some, the way you said it, though, that's like, can you even believe it's coming out this year? Right there, I feel like I'm already off the boat. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, you're paying that much reverence to it. It's just going to be a fucking movie for me. It's just going to come and go. It Star Wars <laughs> as a franchise is a pretty important franchise in, like, media. Yeah, we need to kill that stigma soon. I, I don't know. I it's it, it was it was or anti stigma. I, what I don't know how you say that. Probably. It was. Stigmata? I think it was undoubtedly a positive influence on media for the future. Because like, here's the thing about Star Wars too that a lot of people don't give it credit for. Right yeah, like yeah, it's a really basic storyline, and yeah, the writing is honestly pretty bad. Um, but what they did with special effects, and I don't I don't even like. Uh, usually I don't like to mention the spectacle portion of films, but in the case of Star Wars it's important because it was it was it wasn't just the practical special effects that they did. It was the atmosphere that they created and the sound design that was on a completely different level than anything else at the time. Um, and and the 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 future that they created or the space world that they created because technically it's the past. But um, the, the space world that they created was, like, dark and gritty and honestly, like, kind of, like, realish or believable. And that was something that wasn't traditionally done in sci-fi on film. Uh, uh, in film, it wasn't always, or at least it wasn't super popular. The most popular and common sci-fi was, like, the really pristine, clean, Star Trek-y look to things. And I love Star Trek, too! Um... But, uh, but you know, it, it is a stark difference, Star Wars and Star Trek, in, in, in their atmosphere. And that was See, pretty important. For me, at this point, I want more movies that happen in space that aren't like Star Wars and aren't like Star Trek. I want 
because space is such an interesting place when you look at the you know, what we know about it in terms of real life right. and i feel like that it's such an interesting topic that we just forego for oh blue green aliens uh, look at these fantastic fantasy designs we have like yeah. it, it, it's just like then that's not bad but it takes away from what we could do with a more realistic spacey movie they, yeah they don't pay proper reverence to how cool space should be they just right. bring you these freaking flat characters yeah. yeah, and that's what the story's about, and it's like all this political drama, and it's like I don't care. I want to see the cool world. Well, that's the that the 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 new trilogy has a lot of the political drama stuff, and the the old that's trilogy they doesn't take the story. Yeah, and that was just stupid, honestly. Like those. This is that. this is why I kind of like Avatar was closer to me. Uh, Avatar, right. of course, people don't like it. It's not not a great movie. Yeah. But the, the the kind of planet that they made and designed was closer to the idea. I mean, the aliens were not. But it, the world was. It, um, I, and it I, was very cool. I think this is something, actually, that's not as appreciated in Star Wars as well. And, and part of the reason that it was so successful is I'm going to liken this to Dark Souls, actually, now that oh, I'm thinking oh. about it. Do I Isaac know, instead. Do I, Isaac. <laughs> no, everybody likens everything to Dark Souls, so I'm just going to do it here. But it, it actually does fit. Because the thing about Star Wars is, it, this is actually something that I really don't like about like modern RPG games, um, and why I really like Zelda. Um, at least the olden days of Zelda. Is, is that it... it, it it's always so heavy-handed. Like, you're walking through the world, and then, you know, you talk to a character, and you're like, oh, who are the Adir or something? Like, I'm playing I'm playing Pillars of Eternity, so that's a place in there. And then I have, like, a fucking essay about the history of the Adir. But, like, that, that seems so immersion-breaking to me, because yeah. I, I'm a character who's lived and grown up in that world. I would know who the Adir are. Right? Like, it, 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 no, no one, like, I don't go over and be like, oh yeah, it's a Roman thing. Who are the Romans? And then some guy just decides to give me an entire <laughs> breakdown of the Roman republics and turn into well, the Empire. Well, you see. <laughs> yeah, like, that doesn't happen, and it's immersion breaking. And the thing that Star Wars did, even though the script was pretty poor in general, at least in dialogue, what they did that was really interesting is they hinted at a much vaster universe that you, you can't even you don't even understand the depths of they're just like hinting at like little things and little backstories to characters that they're not going to explain because it's stupid to explain them and just show you instead and that is good that's cool that's that's good storytelling in that way and that's something and that some... dark souls do does too and, and the old zelda does as well where it makes the information kind of esoteric and that's way more interesting in my opinion i i agree to a point but i think it, to the point in Star Wars is that it gets so absurd that it kind of just gives them a free license to do whatever they Make want. Shit with, up. Yeah, and it it, it lessens well, a little bit. Yeah, I don't if, like. If you watch A New Hope, they, they don't they don't really go into the super detailed stuff like well, just, like, 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 like 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 the Clone Wars, for instance. When when they mention the Clone Wars, which ended up being the second in the new trilogy. It literally was one line where Luke was like, "Oh, my father was in the Clone Wars," and he was like, "Yeah, he was a good pilot." And then they continue on. They you never mention the Clone Wars ever again in the entire old trilogy. Just that one line about the Clone Wars, and then that fucking got into people's heads. Like, what is the fucking Clone Wars? Like, what what happened then? Like, why was there fucking some kind of war? Why clones? What the fuck? Like shit like that. That is, that isn't super. I don't know. Push. And you know I, I, the I whole agree. reason that existed is because somebody thought that sounded cool and that was going to be the end of the whole story. And then oh, they're yeah. like, wait a minute, we can make billions of dollars. Let's capitalize on every opportunity we That's can. That's totally true, yes. You're, that old you're, you're not wrong about that shit. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're not wrong about that at all. But at the same time, though, that wasn't the initial intention. And that is what makes the original trilogy pretty good, is that the intention was just to fill a world with a history that was realistic in that people didn't just give you an entire breakdown of everything that's going on at all times, you know? And that's something that I actually really didn't like about Avatar. In Avatar, they told you the entire history of all this shit that's happening, and I would have rather just jumped in, because all the characters know all this information already, you know? Like, they don't need to learn about it. They, they know it. They live in that world. That's their world. So... You know, like, Alien! Alien is so fucking good! That That's such a good sci-fi universe, because in, like, the Alien movie and and, and, and Aliens 2, they don't really explain anything. Yeah. You know, I'm it, actually it's... excited. Didn't uh, Neil, Neil Blom, Blom come yep. from for? Yep. He's making the new Alien. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I got his name wrong. 
Uh, but I, I, I'm, st- I'm actually still so salty that he's not making the next District Nine movie. But I'm uh, fine with that. I want it so bad. Like I... it got to the point where I wanted it when, when the, when the first movie ended, and I kind of went away for a while. And then like two years ago, I was like, man, I still really want that. And now I'm sitting here like, I really want this fucking like it needs to happen. I, it just kept increasing over time. But uh, anyway, uh, I have that's... one more point, and that's regarding the whole. Uh, what you were just talking about. Essentially, replayability is also a huge factor. If you go and you spell everything out, it's going to be real boring to watch. But if you don't, you make it kind of hinted at and esoteric, the second time you watch it, you're going to go, wait a minute, I know everything about this movie already. Now I can fill in the blanks based on what I know. Yep. Yeah. That's kind of important. And that created that the extended universe. That, that created the extended universe around Star Wars and that that's what kept Star Wars alive over decades is the extended universe fleshing out all these things like like in star wars you know there's like whole fucking like if you go on the wikipedia any fucking oh, fuck character me. any character that has it's like called the wikipedia it, it, it is called the I, wikipedia oh my fucking god leave. but I'm if you go if you go on the wikipedia th- like literally any character that has like a second of screen time has this super detailed history to him, like of all the things, all the things that happened, what led him to the events yeah. in the in in his one second of screen time, like all the all the random like useless fighter pilots at the Death Star scene in the first movie, the, all those characters have huge backstories. I kind of hate that. People sometimes just don't do anything in their life and then die. Yeah, no, that's that's like, totally true. You, but that's you've the made thing. out the situation where no one can get away from being deified, and I think that's such bullshit. But that's what the movie did, is that they made these characters, and then people uh, turned them into, like, fully fleshed out stories. And that kind of grew the whole fan base around Star Wars for decades. But that was what was so cool about the original movies, in my opinion, is that they didn't, like, give you this super drudged up... But they catered to them later. Well, like they yeah, wouldn't uh, have yeah, a later, Wikipedia yes. if they didn't give them all the answers over time, even if they're just small uh, answers. No, no, actually, please, please. they they didn't really. The 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 thing they just straight up wrote backstories for characters that didn't have them. No, no, no. They they Lucas never actually made backstories for a lot of these characters. Um, what happened was uh, after the Star Wars films, um, basically George Lucas greenlighted the extended universe, and he's. Like, this isn't... George Lucas isn't, like, Tolkien. He didn't make, like, the Silmarillion or anything with all the things. This was just people who were authorized to create backstories for these characters through the extended universe. And and George Lucas said, yeah, it's all. No, no holds bars. As long as you get the permission through um, LucasArts, you can do whatever you want. Just don't touch 30 years after the end of the third movie. That's that that's that's all he said because he said that one day he wants to make sequels and J.J. Abrams movie the going back in a circle here, that's that's the first part of that because that's the thirty years that that people weren't allowed to touch with the extended universe. Isn't isn't that just a complete admission that his writing is really shitty that he just doesn't care at all that he just lets people go nuts with it? Well, the thing is George Lucas didn't actually write the original series. Um, all right, whoever wrote its writing is really shitty. It, it's, it's if it's just irrelevant if all these characters have any role in anything like it well it's not that they're that irrelevant happen? it's it's not that the character like they're i mean in any movie there's a bunch of irrelevant characters that are just tertiary or quadnary or something that just don't really matter um, yeah I, I don't know what the actual Maybe word like for that is all right just google back on that one yeah though. google back but, no, I mean, there's a bunch of characters that are just throwaway characters in any movie. I mean, the the storylines for the main characters have pretty intense backgrounds. Like, you know, Luke's from Tatooine. He was, a uh, like, an orphan boy and stuff and all this stuff. And then Han Solo was a smuggler. He used to work for Jabba the Hutt and got in deep with Dead. And Princess Leia was on all this. So, so all, all the main characters have detailed stories in the films but like the the background characters didn't really i mean like you know you have like admiral akbar who just shows up at one point and he has no backstory he just suddenly appears in the movie and he's the and admiral of the rebel trap. fleet yeah, yeah and then he says it's a trap and I, then well, all of a sudden I he quickly, has this huge backstory can i quickly say i really fucking hate job of the hut that that character shouldn't exist aren't you supposed to you know like Jabba? no no i didn't mean the character not the not the him and the I just, just like he's a big fat slug. That fucker could die. Someone could just shoot him or stab him, or he doesn't move. 
He's, hey, but he's got underlings, right? He's, he's su powerful. He's supposed to be a mob boss. Like that's he's yeah, supposed to be but like a. It's just it seems. It's like Fat Tony. He's the fat. World. He's the Fat Tony of the. Uh... Someone just like walk in and bring a fucking rocket launcher, some laser launcher, rocket well, laser launcher. Did you see? Did you see Return of the Jedi? I did, but I don't remember it. Well, that what you just said happens in Return of the Jedi. So. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Doesn't he get thrown into the the Marlac Flarlac pick? No, pit? that's Boba Fett. Sar Sarlac. Sarlac. Sarlac, yeah. Boba Fett gets thrown into the Sarlac pit. Which, yeah, but by he the way, die, though. well, yeah, in the extended universe, he doesn't actually die. He, like, I think he survives in the belly of the Sarlac, and then he cuts his way out and survives. It's like and, the Bible. Yeah, that's, it's, it's weird. weird. I'm trying to figure out how I could say in a weird, like, I was kind of contradictory when I said like the characters shouldn't be irrelevant, but also they should. Hmm. Like I think it's more just that he surrendered power to people he doesn't know and just said go nuts with this stuff. Like, yeah. As a writer, don't you want the ability to harness those characters later if you need them? That just yes. seems really strange to me. Yes and no. I mean, like he said, thirty years before, thirty years after, don't touch because that's I I want to make movies in in that span. But I mean, he's not like George Lucas wasn't isn't a writer like he wasn't exactly he was he's you could really consider him a creator like he he made the story yes um but he had writers write the story he basically um sat in meetings and and with a bunch of writers and gave them an outline of what is supposed to happen and then brainstormed as so he like storyboarded it in general and let them fill in the details yeah essentially that's that's how the original trilogy went um and to a lesser degree, that's how the new trilogy went, except he got a direct writing credit because he basically wrote it. And that's, it's, that's like, honestly, basically the, the problem with the new, I've said this before, but basically the problem with the new trilogy and the new Indiana Jones movie is that George Lucas was way too famous and had way too much money when those movies came out because no one would say no to him. Like, like for instance, Harrison Ford basically rewrote half of Han Solo. Yeah. Because well, we talked about this, I know. Yeah, because because he said, George, I'm not gonna say this line. Like I'm, I'm just, not, it's stupid. I'm not gonna say it. And so he would, he would basically rewrote, rewrite a lot of Han Solo's lines, and that is the same kind of thing. But but what happened in the new trilogy and in the new Indiana Jones, no one was like George Lucas. That's fucking stupid. No. Why does he have so many like accolades given to him though? If he wasn't even really the writer. He, he was, you know what? He's kind of akin to what he did on Star Wars and on Indiana Jones, except lesser for Indiana Jones because one of the main things, or honestly, pretty much the totally main thing about Indiana Jones is the direction, and the direction is brilliant in those films, um, and that's Steven Spielberg. But um, the the you can liken him more to a creative director on a video game. Like, I have a bunch of ideas, I'm gonna get a bunch of talented people together, and make them make it, essentially. Okay. Um, but he, he did have the ideas, right? I mean, like, honestly, Star Wars is basically an homage to Flash Gordon. Like, all of the transitions are Flash Gordon transitions. They're, they're like, even, even I, I, like, actually, I talked about this before, yeah, Indiana Jones, too. The, the, even the character's outfit is based on a 20s um, film. Uh, for Indiana Jones, so like it's all it's all like homage type things, and he got a bunch of talented people together to make something based on his initial design. So he's really more like a creative director than anything else, and in that way, that's probably why he gets all the accolades. Even though a lot of people like to say that he's he just rid on rode on the coattails of Lawrence Kasdan, which is honestly a pretty fair reading of the whole situation. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean. I don't know. I think he deserved the accolades that he got for for Star Wars and Indiana Jones. I mean, he it, he did make those films. Like those films wouldn't have been made if it wasn't for his vision. So, you know, he he just in those days he had people who didn't know who he was being like, "No, that's a stupid idea. Don't do that." And he would be like, "Okay, you're right." But in the modern era, he doesn't have anybody that's going to do that for him. And Right, and really... then he was thrown up with so much cash that it just didn't matter anymore. Yeah, exactly. It, they were used completely to leverage properties to sell more stuff more than to make any statement about the actual universe or film. Yes. 
exactly, yeah. And I hate that about them. That's so empty. Yeah. And it kind of taints the entire possibility of me being interested in it going forward from that. Yeah, that's fair. Although, you can't go back. Right? I will, you never go back from that. I will say that George Lucas basically isn't even attached to the new Star Wars trilogy that they're making. Um, J.J. Abrams is like the main visionary behind the new movie. And right. uh, honestly, he's been saying and doing the right things. Uh, and it, it, it looks like it's really going to... It's weird since Star Wars is just sort of an homage to old sci-fi. Um, I think this new Star Wars is going to be an underdog. It, well, I think this new Star Wars is going to be an homage to the old Star Wars because he's he's spending a lot of time on just practical effects and stuff, not CGI, which right. is where well, you should go. That. Is it yeah. is it me or is CGI has just gotten worse over the years for some yeah, reason? Yeah, it seems that way. It, it's so strange. Well, it's the. Uh, the, the thing about it is that what you makes know what makes really good CGI is that you have to put it with practical effects. Like if you don't if you don't put it side by side with practical effects, then it's easy for a person to tell that it's CG. Like if you look at the the new trilogy of Star Wars, it all looks so ugly and gross. Like it's so obvious everything's a green screen and it's right. like there's Our nothing have there. Gotten better. Yeah, well, and, and then, but you look at something like Interstellar, um, where, like, for instance... Well, I, w I, would, I wouldn't talk about Interstellar, as a sense of spoilers. Well, no, but I, this is just the technical side of things. Like, like for instance, um, TARS... That's what I mean. I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk about that. Well, I, I'm not going to talk about his design, but I will just say that that was a practical effect, which is yeah, okay. really incredible. Like, it, it, it's amazing, and they, they put a lot of time and effort into doing that and and you know what it, it showed through and and yeah they they, yeah. they coupled it with cgi because some things you just can't do with practical effects but it, it was it was indistinguishable and that's what is so that's what you have to do with cgi you can't just do yeah. all cgi because then it just looks silly like the new hobbit movies they look silly they're silly looking. I fucking love that at the end of the 80s and the early 90s, we ended up getting a whole bunch of movies that held up so much better than shit from the end of the 90s through the early 2000s. The fucking um, Jurassic Park. The effects in that movie still look yeah. really good. I mean, there's shit. There's so many awkward CG sequences from shit from the early 2000s that, like, there's a whole section of movies I don't even want to watch anymore because they're yeah. just awful looking. And it's because they, they were struggling with whether or not to go full CGI or... Full right. practical effects, but really, I know the, why. you got You got to you, you got to balance practical against CGI because otherwise, no it just looks concept ugly. of that. This would look awful in ten years. Like yeah. they really didn't understand that technology would continue to progress, and their technology then would be it, it would be a huge mark on the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, you got to make it. You can't just uh, throw in CG into something that is uh, like a like a live action just straight up like real world movie and just say like all the effects are going to be in cg because it's going to look ugly like if you look at something even like tron which was like the first movie that really took cgi to the next level like the whole thing was cg if you go back and watch that movie i mean the movie's not that great but the the cg looks pretty cool like it and and that's because the whole movie is based around that type that type of atmosphere and that theme and so it looks pretty good. Um, and Remember Lawnmower Man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, so that's the thing with Brad. And, and that's why I, I hope, I really do hope that the new Star Wars movie, because it, it looks like it's, it's, it's being made by a fan, and that is good. If right, it, because honestly, the fans are better at the whole Star Wars thing than the freaking dude that made it. Yes. <laughs> that, I don't think you're wrong about that at all. <laughs> I don't think he cares as much anymore about Star Wars, uh, and I think J.J. Abrams is more passionate about, you know, having it go back to its roots, and that is what I really hope for in the, and now I'm just like making it out to be the fucking messiah, and I'm gonna be disappointed <laughs> by it, but I, I hope, I hope it's good. I hope, I, I hope J.J. Abrams saying, does though. a good job. Isn't it, isn't it crazy how bad Jurassic World kind of looks? Yeah, it looks really bad. It looks real bad. And it's it gonna be bad. I really like Chris Pratt. <laughs> and Oh, is Chris Pratt in that? Yeah, that's why oh. it's so bad. It sucks, I know, right? That's what I was feeling. What if it's really good though? If it's yeah, but be... what if it has a bunch of callbacks to Jurassic Park one? Oh. That'll be terrible. 
Yeah, you can look at like that's like it's gonna happen. The new RoboCop movie was god awful as well for very similar it, reasons. Don't. Yeah, you, you don't want to watch any more of it. It's real bad. Also, it's, I just realized that that JJ Abrams is gonna have his name on both the Star Wars series yeah, and Star Trek. Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. That was, how do you do that? That that's was a amazing. big thing. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I think the 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 JJ Abrams Star Trek movie. Oh, they're, say, they're good. Uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, the second one was, mm. but the first one was really good. Um, it wasn't very Star Trekky, but, but that's probably for the better. <laughs> well, well, but 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 what I will say about it is that he kept the main thing about Star Trek, and that's the relationships between the main characters. The relationships between the main characters is the most important thing about the, in my opinion, the, the most important thing about the original um, series of, of Star Trek. And that was a major focus in J.J. Abrams' Star Trek movie. And I thought he did a great job with that. He really mm. did. So, even though it's lens flare the movie. <laughs> I like the first one. I didn't see the second one. The second I one's not great. One, it's It's... It's okay. They keep t showing it to me on Netflix, and I'm like, yeah, but I could watch Bob's bur uh, Burgers, and I'll probably be happier tonight. Mm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I just realized I, I can watch a bunch of movies on Amazon, uh, and I don't... That, that's the thing that I hate oh, about... Oh, yeah, you have Prime, right? Yeah, that's the thing I hate about uh, Netflix, is that I wanted to watch movies, and apparently you don't watch movies on Netflix, so I was like, oh. Yes. But now I'm looking at Amazon right now, and yeah, I have to pay for these movies, but I'm, I would, I'll, I'm down for that. I yeah. I'll pay for a movie. Oh, because on Prime, they just like give you a bunch of movies. Oh, yeah, those are free, but I'm talking about the newer movies. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I could just watch them. I'm going to yeah. watch, probably going to watch Interstellar again now that I can. It's and I, I, I have Song of the Sea queued up, too, since you recommended that. Yeah, watch the shit out yeah. of that. In other not movie-related news, uh, New Zelda's delayed. Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that. When did they announce that? Oh, uh, yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. All right. They well, actually, that's a good thing. It was a really respectful video. That I liked. I, I didn't see the video. Respectful. It, well, like basically, it was just uh, Aonuma, just on a screen, and he he just said a bunch of things, and he said uh, we're sorry, but we're pushing back Zelda, instead of just you know finding. Did we out even on... have a date? He, well, yeah, it was supposed to come out in it's... 2015. He just said oh. it's going to 2016. So it's not going to be 2015. Okay. No. No. Yeah. The, the uh... big surprise. The, the issue with that, and what people have said on Twitter, is now, what, what does Nintendo have for this year now? Because that was, their, that was their big thing. Well, Star Fox. they said Star Fox, yeah, right? Like, that was their, but, some maybe but we're so, are, Don't we all think Star Fox is going to suck because it's going to have motion control? It is going to suck, yeah. Yeah, but that's so. what they have. They don't care if their shit sucks. Here's the they dream, have. though. The dream is that the motion controls are optional. It, no, it's That's the dream. dream. Yeah, it's the dream. <laughs> Funny it's joke. Dream. That's going to happen. Here. Um, it's but the fucking you, I will say to this fucking show before <laughs> if you I, guys if you guys if any of you are avid Magic the Gathering fans and when I when I heard this don't, news no, no, don't be cocky about if it I, no 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 I because wasn't cocky about here's it. The, here's the thing when when uh, when when I when I streamed uh, yesterday they uh, the the announcement came out and and I watched it and I said I fucking i called it i knew it was it was like of course of course that wasn't good there's no way it was gonna come out in 2015 and then someone was like oh rob don't pretend you had foresight in hindsight and i was like no no there is literally video proof yeah, of me is. saying that very thing on the magic series that's, that's stupid for them to say that come on it's yeah. so obvious it, it, well yeah i mean well, they showed us nothing people it couldn't have come out this year in fairness we were very analytical of the footage that a lot of people i think weren't but but yeah and i mean that that's the thing about it is that if you watch the E3 presentation, um, they didn't show anything. They had a pre-rendered cutscene, and then they had supposedly a rendered area, but then when me and Nick spent an hour looking at it, we found out that, like, 90% of the frame was just a, um, like a, like a, a painted skybox. Skybox. So it, it just, there was no game there. And then they said that it's coming out in 2015, I was like, they you know what, they just don't have anything for 2015, and they had to generate hype, and you know what, looks like uh, we were right. That's 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 such bullshit. The whole thing pisses me off because they used that, even though they knew they didn't have it for that year, and they strategically positioned that to sell people on the idea of buying a system, knowing the game was coming out at a time they knew it wasn't. Yeah. 
That's what they did. Fuck I think they're fucking though. con artists. I mean, there's a possibility, though, that they really were trying to push for that kind of release. Or maybe date, they were trying, but, but it they was knew. stupid. I mean, it, yeah. Damn well, they couldn't have made it in that short a time. I can't it's imagine impossible. they're putting all their fucking marbles on Star Fox, though, because they're not. It, it's just, like, Star Fox is really hype, and people are really excited about it, but... I mean, it's, it's not that they're putting all their marbles; they just have no other options. Yeah, well, though they have plenty of other fucking options. Metroids, uh, everything else, all of their IPs we've talked about for what nine else? years. I don't, you know, that's something that's really weird to me about Nintendo. Is like, do they just honestly have like one development studio that's first party in in Nintendo? They, no, they can't. All, be, all right? the games have teams. There's a right. Zelda team. They 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 they've been working on Zelda always, and that's the Zelda team. It's I think it's actually even called Zelda Team, or at least it was a yeah. few years ago. No, that's yeah. that's the thing because if that is the case where they have multiple teams working on different projects at all times, like how are they not coming out with anything ever? I don't know. Well, they have a lot of people working on Splatoon, but I'm not really, I'm not really on that boat yet. Yeah. Um, and Xenoblade has well, no, Xenoblade is third. It's party. It's not first party. It's third. Yeah, it's third party. It's, it's just. Why heavy. are we pretending Splatoon is a big deal? Stop doing that. It I'm looks kind of cool. Just... It but does look. It looks like a really cool it's idea. Not gonna Fine. Sell... It doesn't look like fucking Zelda, though. Right, no, right. it's not going to sell consoles. That's... that's the other thing. Is the the where the Mar There's Mario. There's always been Mario, and yeah. we've been sitting here kind and of we're waiting. We're sick of it. I'm not sick of 3D Land or 3D World. Was amazing. Oh, I'm super sick of it. Uh, did you I'd play be 3D? fine if they just didn't release any more Mario games for ten years. Did you Did you play 3D World? I didn't want to. It looked it's, boring. It was great. It was fantastic. Oh, God, cat. Um, <laughs> but no, 3D World uh, was really, really good. Um, and I want to play that. It's, it's worth it. It's just, it, it it's, I mentioned this, I think I've talked about like 9,000 times on Magic, but it just, it's like, all right, this is a great Mario game, but it just makes me want a better Mario game that's not in like fake 3D. Like the, well, the perspective. Wait, that's there's what I've gonna said. Be, there's going to be a new Nintendo console. Are you, have we talked about that before? The Nintendo NX? Have we talked what? about that? Yeah, have you guys not heard of this? So, I think I might have heard something about it, but I thought it was so stupid that I just didn't... I, I might have blotted it out. Nintendo basically announced an announcement. They said that there's a secret project, which is a console, that is going to be coming out soon, and the project name is Nintendo NX. So there's going to be a what new console coming out. the fuck could they do with the new console? They just released the new 3DS. They just fucking released the Wii U. What what console could they possibly have? Well, if you consider Nintendo's history as far as the release cycle on on consoles uh, is concerned, you actually have to look at the DS. And the DS came out with what? What was it called? The DSi? Where, DSi, like, DS Lite, DS XL, DS3, DS XL. Yeah, you got well, the order right, right. a little backwards, but well, you're close, yeah. But, but uh, I mean, specifically, there was that one DS console that that they marketed as, like, only only some games are going to be exclusive to that console, right? Which one was that? Was that the DSi? Maybe. I don't... It I didn't, had, well, yeah, it had the ARG shit, and it had a camera in it. And, yeah. But either, they either did way, it just recently with the new 3DS. Well, it's the well, same thing. That's the thing, though, is that... Uh, with that DS console, the original, um, that one came out and was only out for about a year, and then they announced the 3DS, it, right? So, no. No, 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 no. Hang on a second. The, the it one... was the DS, then the DS Lite, then the DSi. And then, and then the, the DS XL. Oh, yeah, the XL, but that was very short. That was like six-month period, I think. It was, but, but what I'm saying is that one console that they had that that only if, like, some games would be exclusive to that, even though it's still a DS, that one, only lasted around a year until they announced the 3DS. So I, I would speculate that this is the same thing. They announced the new 3DS, and what, that's been around for almost a year now, so they're going to announce a new... Whoa, handheld. whoa, whoa, wait. Whoa, whoa. The new 3DS came out, like, a two months ago <laughs> uh, well but i mean like eventually they're probably going to announce i think the nx is probably going to be a handheld in my opinion i i would quit life if it was another handheld why why would they do another handheld i you know maybe they'll know. use one screen this time that would be <laughs> weird yeah remember the days when they we, used to use one screen we had the damn 2ds as well there's so many ds's the ds is their baby i don't think they would want to not have well, it could high. It, it, it's entirely. What could they do? Likely. What could they possibly do though? Was Something entirely different. It's a fucking. It's a Nintendo Apple TV. It's a maybe, shoe that you put on, and it. it maybe the NX is their virtual reality. Oh. oh yeah, they did actually say they were gonna do that. Yeah, it could be. Can we? 
I, I kind of want to get off the now? VR train right now. How many are there? Four or five? I'm, here's the thing. Like that, with the whole yeah. VR hype is that we have all this VR hype, but we're still like a couple years back on VR technology, you know? So we're, well, we're generating all this hype. I Nobody's know. to market still. And there's so many people right. doing it. Well, here's it's, the thing. Just, there's Here. all this hype and people are like, oh, we're going to focus our presentation on this VR that we have. But we're not going to have something like that for probably in a couple years. Here. before. These, I, these aren't going to be in houses for years. They're just I, not. I don't know if I have mentioned this on Magic, but I'm going to put it in video form so that there is proof that I called this shit. Okay? So here's the thing, right? There's all these... This is going to be a little bit long-winded. I'm going to try to keep it short. Um, there, There is um, a precedent where they they showed that, um, that, that all these VR is, is, are coming out soon, right? All this stuff. There's a big fucking bubble of VR where everybody's going to start competing soon, right? And, but none of them are actually coupled with anything significant, right? There's not like a new right. Halo coming with Xbox Glass or whatever. There's not. There's that we nothing, know. Nothing... They would probably not announce the software until after. Right, but there's there's nothing specifically coupled or anything that's on the horizon that should be specifically coupled with the, with the proprietary VR software or uh, proprietary VR hardware. That we know right? of. It's important. Right, that right, we right. Say that but we know of. No, but but you have to listen to the rest of what I'm going to say. So. So there's there's nothing that yes yeah, sure that we know of yet that is coupled with the releases of these things Thank you. right, but we do know that and yeah okay I know this is a meme but Half Life Three is basically I confirmed. Fucking hate you. It, oh, no 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 but it is actually basically confirmed oh. now. Here here's the thing Half Life Three is basically oh, it's confirmed, confirmed now. now. Well no 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 because here's here's what's happening. In, 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 over the past like six, seven months, Source Two has been slowly implemented oh, into. No. It has been slowly implemented <laughs> into Dota Two, right? And it eventually showed up that there were Half Life Three files in the Source Two stuff. Now, that's that. Not all of Source Two Dota hasn't been ported entirely over into Source Two, but they are suggesting that that the next big update for Dota 2 is going to port all of Dota into Source 2. Now, do you really think that they made Source 2 to upgrade a, a game that's been out for like five years? I don't think so. I think the more likely thing, especially considering that there are files for Half-Life 3 in the folders for Source 2, that they're making Source 2 for Half-Life 3. Now, think about that. Half-Life 3 has been a meme for a long time, and it's got this incredible amount of, like, hype behind it, despite no one knowing anything of, like, what it could possibly be, and also that Half-Life 2 wasn't that great, yeah, in my I opinion. Yeah, I get where you're going, right? So, imagine, imagine now, this is what Steam Escher's VR... The Morpheus or whatever in... in... Right, Steam VR is recently that? announced... And it was a thing, and, and, and from what I've been told by a game developer when we were at PAX, it is by far the best one. That's that's what he said. And this is a, this was a game developer that is making a VR game, okay? And he said it was by far the best one. Is it the now, developer I assume you mean? It, it was, it was uh, one of the team of um, uh, uh, Don't Stop Talking and nobody will yeah, roll up okay. yeah so it was it, it's it, it's one of those devs and he, he and he said that that was the best the best one by far when he used it because it has like one-to-one -one, uh motion control with little with these they got these like playstation motion type controllers but they they're like it's like one-to-one -one and the the precision is incredible and all this crazy stuff right so he said it was the best one now imagine all of this v this VR bubble pops. All these things come out suddenly, and you have the Oculus. Now you have the Steam uh, or the um, the 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 Gear VR. You've got the Sony's VR coming out, and all this stuff. That's but all idea. of a sudden, now you have Steam machines coming out, which are supposedly Valve's answer to consoles, so that you can couch game while uh, like with PC gaming, right? And you have Steam VR coming out at the same time. Isn't this the perfect storm to couple it with Half-Life 3? The first real AAA title built from the ground up to be a VR game. And on top of that, it already has an enormous mountain of hype behind it. I really think this is what's going to happen soon when Steam uh, I VR get it. releases. So it's going to be Half-Life 3 and then as the, the little exponent, it'll be a D. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> But that's that's I think essentially you're fucking crazy. Uh, well, it's on video. I could be wrong. I, I don't I don't doubt that I might be wrong. I but... actually, 
you're probably right, and I'm just gonna really hate the gaming world for a while because <laughs> all we'll talk about is 3D everything and VR everything. Yeah, like, I, yeah. it'll be the same as the 3DS and motion controls. It'll be like, okay, it's cool, but let's just like also remember we've got monitors too, and well, those are the, fun. It's the point where we're at where it's just like, oh, VR, VR, VR. It's like, guys. We're, we're, we need games. We still need games. Where are the games? Well, that's what I'm saying. Half Life. That'll 3. be your option. No, Half no. I, I just mean that's it. Games without the VR. Like we're still like in like a magical land of shitty games. No. These past All few years. All we care about is peripherals and proprietary right. and technology, that, just, not yeah. games. We, we only games. want hardware because hardware drives software. Well, think about the market that that Valve could corner with Half Life Three releasing with their no, proprietary I, I get what VR. You're saying. Okay. Steam Gear fucking VR headset. They glasses. could with with the release of Half Life Three and their Steam VR, in addition to the Steam machines, they could completely corner the market on this on the future of VR technology. Which Joker, it seems 3D. like it's possible that the industry is actually going into that direction. I, I think it was let in my opinion when the motion control stuff was coming out. I was like, I really don't think that the the the, the I really don't think the industry is going into that direction. But I think there is a realistic possibility that with this peripheral, with with VR peripherals, this is the future, potentially, of video games. There's a possibility that this could be um, a new way to really experience video games. And with that, if Valve is the one on top of that fucking mountain when, every, when this bubble pops and all this shit comes out, they are going to have so much market share that they're gonna make so much bank on it. It it's the tired. it's the perfect time to release Half Life Three. Confirm. As with any technology, it has its own specific marks that show in in the way that design is implemented. And this was the same thing that we dealt with with 3D games on 3D televisions and motion controls in general. It will cater to a specific audience with a very specific type of gameplay, and it will also alienate a massive amount of game developers who don't necessarily have the capabilities of dealing with this new way of, you know, interacting with the player. So there's going to be a whole bunch of failed projects that are going to appeal to this idea and may basically make a layer of trash that, like, a handful of games will rise above. So anytime a new peripheral comes out, even if it sounds like the future of gaming, and even if to some degree I maybe want it to be the future of gaming, Gaming is not as simple as just saying we now have this peripheral, so everyone's going to make games for it, and they're going to be fantastic. And you got to learn how to make shit for that. I would say, based on historical precedent, you're totally right. That should be how this whole VR f fiasco turns out. But I think this might actually be the exception to the rule. I, I, I why you're totally right, but I think this might be it. Well, because in Every fantasy movie or, you know, sci science fiction based thing wh where, where they show video games of the future for like 40 years, it's been putting on a headset or walking into a holodeck and experiencing an immersive environment that yeah. is completely surrounding your senses entirely. And... We're at the precipice of that being actually viable. When the whole motion control shit started, um, like a couple of years ago, I honestly don't think the technology was there. It felt extremely forced. I mean, fuck. It's still the, not there. Motion it's still not there, yeah. It, I totally agree. It's still not there. And you know what? The Steam headset apparently has motion tracker, uh, tracking sensors in the headset itself, which no, none of the other VR things do, by the way. Um... But it it, it, it it has that in there, so it, it's it's adapting an element of motion into um, into their VR experience. But the way that it was described to me too, by the way, is that they have these like motion controllers that are like the Sony, whatever the old the PlayStation Move or whatever. Yeah, um, freaking stick with a light up ball at the end. Big right. Deal. But here's the thing: the way that it was explained to me is that it, it was it's Those designed suck. it's designed to be modular so that it's one to one. So that basically, if you're holding a gun, so was the Wii mode? No, 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 not, 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 not the same way. Because the Wii mode always feels like a Wii mode, even if you're holding it in a different way. It's a, it's a so little it is a wand flimsy with a ball plastic. At the end of it. Well, no, 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 that's the thing. This is supposed to be modular. So if you're holding a gun, you will actually be holding what feels like a gun in your hand when you're using it. 
right? That's that's the intention with these with these motion controllers with the Steam VR headset. It's designed to be mapped one to one so that it really feels like you're holding whatever you're supposed to be holding. So with that in mind, that could definitely further the whole motion experience, even though I don't really particularly it like hand motion tracking in general. Specifically. It does it have hand tracking. It it it, it, it has it has well, it has tracking sensors in the device itself, which apparently have um I think it's it, like the downward facing cameras. The delay, yeah, the delay is in is like I think like a millisecond, so it's it's extremely small input delay. <clears throat> um, so it, it feels one to one. This is I, now, like I said, this is how it was described to me. This isn't me testing it, so I don't know, but this is how it was described to me that it that it Wait. is basically th there's no delay and it's it's basically one to one. What I mean is you need to be able to see your hands in the game or you're going to have no orientation as to where you're moving and what you're touching. Yeah, that that's actually what that, that that's what I mean by one to one. That that's what the guy told me when when I was talking okay. to the developer, he said you could look down at your hands and you can and if you I'm I'm moving my wrists right now in like a circular weird motion and the way that he was moving his wrists in his hand is how it showed up when he looked at his hands in the video game. Okay. So like it it is it, it, their you intention. Gloves? Uh no, it's I don't think so. Maybe I don't I don't think so. I, I think it's gotten to the point where it, it's just it's a I'll I'll see it when I or I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, kind of thing. At this I point. agree. Like, and I, I it's just gonna it's gonna stay that way until until I can have one of these headsets, put it on, and try it out. I will not believe anything that's told to me yeah. about it. And specifically, what I meant before about the whole marks and games and all that, like. It, this doesn't make sense for a top-down 2D strategy game to be on uh, your Oculus Rift. Dota? No, 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 not 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 Dota. I, I, no, I, I I didn't mean Dota. I just mean games of certain genres don't make sense in VR. Yeah, but and that, those games aren't going to stop being made whether or not it becomes pervasive. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's well. Firstly, I think there are things that you could do with with an isometric game in uh, in an immersive VR Maybe environment. Maybe that you can. Like a like a god game, won't. for instance, or or a or a city builder. That would be really interesting in that. RTSs, yeah, no. But then you also have to consider though that even in the different mediums of even just video games that we have right now, like console versus PC gaming, certain games don't work on consoles that work on PC and vice versa. So that hasn't killed the industry before, and it potentially. I'm not saying anything going to kill the industry i'm no, just saying I mean, it's not going to be taken as the only method of playing games I, I don't think it will either but i but i i think that it could be a new way to play video games in the future and things that people that that will actually expand the medium as opposed to motion control which i really felt was a gimmick where i don't feel that vr if it's used appropriately will be a gimmick i think right. that it could be not a gimmick it could be uh, a, a completely new yes I, i'm with you then i believe it could not play. be a gimmick in certain situations yes yeah like even even the connect the connect right it, it's supposed to give you free uh, oh, ability of, of movement and it, it tracks everything on your body and all this stuff but it They're still was a was a gimmick because there is no way to have one-to-one -one control it, it just didn't match up it doesn't make sense cognitively um, like if you're playing Just Dance or something, and you look at the like the images of the people that they're supposed to look like, yeah. it's like this blurry blob monster mess because there's no way to make it one to one. It just doesn't make sense. It's not. It, it, it was it insulting won't work. that they tried to market it as if it was one to one when in reality all it was using was gesture cues as sort of like a button press on a keyboard exactly, to trigger that's all an it was. animation. Exactly, it's and that's just, just the that's just shitty. That's misrepresenting the concept. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And, and that's why I, I think the, the whole one-to-one -one nature of, of what the Steam VR thing is supposed to do with its motion trackers could be potentially not a gimmick. Because if you can move and, and manipulate objects in the world in a way that seems realistic, and you can really see your arms reaching out like they're right there in front of you, then that will completely eliminate the gimmicky yeah. aspect of it and not make it just a push a button to fire or push a button to make your character punch or something. You know what I mean? Yes. And that that could be potentially very, very interesting for the future. I don't mean to sound so cynical. I'm actually really for this as long as it's done properly and I just the history lately has just been of so much failure no, and it's... planned obsolescence and like basically just 
everything has been to undermine itself. Yeah. So if we could just I get just... out of the bullshit and maybe do it properly, I could be with it. But it's not going to take over the entire world of gaming. It's not going to be the only method of gameplay that exists. And anybody that tells you other otherwise is just going to be wrong. Yeah. I. Uh, it's fair to be cynical. Uh, it, honestly, if you looked at just the history of peripherals over the past, like, uh, fuck the entire gaming history. It's you're it's right. The it's the convenience of the controller. Until it becomes more convenient to use something that's not a controller, we're going to keep using controllers. There isn't anything more convenient than that. I, I don't think I don't think they're trying to do that necessarily. Well, no, I, I don't. Well, that's the thing is that if I can use a controller, I, I'm going to probably use a controller because we're all so used to it. It feels so natural, and we've gotten so good at making controllers. Like you kind of you don't think you're holding control a, a controller when you're playing a game these days. It's just out of your mind now. And it, it really feels like you're playing the game instead of just pushing buttons. Yeah. The yeah. feeling and of something like playing Super Meat Boy cannot be replicated in any other medium. No, yeah, you're it right. It just can't. You can't do that in VR. It doesn't matter if it's mapping your fingers perfectly. Holding a controller tactilely feels right. That's true. But then I would also say the same. Well, I mean, y yes, that's, that's, a, that's a fair point. But I don't think that's necessarily an entirely negative aspect of this VR thing. Because if you look at something like an RTS... Um, I'm not saying it's can't... negative. It's just other. It's a no, different thing. No, I know. Thing, but I, I'm, but I'm saying as, as an example, you can't play StarCraft II on a controller. And yes, don't don't list me that guy who's a master in StarCraft II and uses a controller. Yeah, I can play Meat Boy with Twitch. my feet. Yes, Nobody else you, does you that. can do those things, but it's not the way that it should be played, right? It, like, it doesn't feel right to play it that way. And an RTS just simply shouldn't be played with a controller, unless they completely fundamentally change the game design and make it a different kind of RTS, like, for instance, Pikmin. Um... But you, right. you can't just you like can't just you can't fail. just adapt it right yeah you you can't just adapt it as if you can just go straight up okay here's a thing on a new basically on a new medium almost and like a, a Peter Molyneux thing to do with that would be to say well now that we've got Connect we're gonna reinvent the RTS and what <laughs> you'll be able to do is gesture your fingers over the landscape and it'll pick up your units and select them just the way you want. Mm. But the reality is, none of those things will work, and it's going to yeah. be really fucking annoying, and no one will play your game. Yeah. That's what's going to happen when you do that. Well, you're probably right. But I have had faith <laughs> in Valve for a while, and I, I think... No, that was anyone... directed at Peter Molyneux, not Valve. Okay, no, no I know. No, I, I'm just saying that I, I know Valve... It's the type of company that likes to create, at least at the beginning, a quality product. And I don't think they would go forward with something if they didn't feel that it worked. And I think it could be that this is... And, and, no, you're and honestly, I don't. I'm not implying that's what they're saying. I think it might be just fine. I was just saying with regard to something like Connect and Peripherals in general. Right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. But... I will say, my prophecy is now recorded for video posterity. I really think that Half-Life 3 is going to re be released as the first AAA title built from the ground up to be a VR game. I would love so very much for one day to get an actual record from Gabe Newell, and he goes, yeah, no, we were never considering making that game. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. That would be the funniest shit of all time. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, they're just really there never was half-life 3 was just a meme yeah <laughs> never was i mean he he's played to the meme several times i know so. they've had shirts yeah but honestly if i'm right though if, if i am right and this is what happens with half-life 3 you win a million dollars <laughs> no i mean that'd be great but if, if i'm right with half-life 3 then that means that half-life 3 has been basically in development for like seven years because Remember, Valve was initially the first company that started working with Oculus, and they were the guys who were who were basically financially supporting them and and help at like developing the hardware with them, and then eventually Oculus went and got bought by Facebook, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden a couple months later, Steam has their own VR. Yeah. So if, if that I like, know. I think I think Facebook has some better if game I'm, catalog. Though, really, <laughs> if if I'm right, if I'm right though then Oculus could be shooting itself in the foot because they could have been the VR system right. that 
ha- that had Half Life Three, which also and they took the quick money over the long money, right? Which is a possibility, or there's there's also a possibility that Valve was working with them for a long time and then realized that they couldn't create the product that they wanted them to create, so sure. they just cut them loose. That's a possibility too. But again, that this is all based on the premise that I am actually right about my prophecy of Half Life Three. So we'll see. We'll never know. We might know. We'll probably know. I the think we'll know by the end of this Half-Life year. Half-Life 3 are so stupid. Yeah. I, I think by the end of this year, we'll know. Uh, I, 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 I think they're announcing I, by the end of this year. I want something more substantive to be the game that puts gets put on this level of a pedestal. Mm-hmm. It's just a sci-fi shooter with like an okay kind of story, I guess. The first one is really good. It, it's been re- it's it's insane how hy- Half-Life 3 has been overhyped the past forever. Yeah, it, it's it's absurd. It's I think become I mean, a that's monster. That's like my new career is to be the anti hype man because <laughs> you can't lose when you have low expectations. Everyone wins with that. I don't think the game will necessarily be the most uh, amazing game ever made, but again, if my prophecy is correct and it is the first first triple A title to be really built from the ground up to be a VR game, then they probably will have been doing a lot of immersive things. That, that that Half-Life, remember the original Half-Life, the the main thing that made it so famous and popular was how immersive it actually yeah. was. No, I know, remember? immersion has been the theme that runs through the series. If you're right, yeah. the first one will be storytelling, the second one will be physics, the third one will be 3D. Yeah, with hopefully, all, thread. With, with hopefully all of those things, you know, put together. So, we'll see. So that, that... It, it, it just all of those things all of those signs it just makes sense to me that that's what they would do but again we'll see i could be completely talking about as maybe wrong. maybe like a year from now you'll be looking back and 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 you'll be right you'll be wrong but maybe you'll just be like you know maybe maybe i just should have google backed <laughs> i should have google backed well done yeah Thanks for watching. I'm glad we googled back. We should uh, actually before before we uh, before we end this one. Let me let me just quickly yeah. look over the comments and see if there's any good questions. Oh, I, I I didn't look at the last uh, comment section. So yeah, I wasn't in that one. Well, there's, there's. I only look at the comment sections that I'm in because I'm a sadistic, terrible um, person. Deep learn any game. Read this book. It's a extremely complex history. That's a great one. Are you gonna spoil Bloodborne right now? Is that what you're gonna do? No, it was someone explaining why Bloodborne isn't a Souls game. Um, oh, he's wrong. Yeah, I. Well, I no, 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 no. no. He, he doesn't. He doesn't mean like isn't a Souls game in how it plays. He means like why it isn't named. Why it's separate from yeah. the series. Yeah. Oh, and he. Okay. B- b- it, 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 that seems like a pretty fitting explanation. It could be. It could be right. Yeah. Um. Uh, okay. Yeah. Is that all? Nope. That's, that's nothing else. That's, that's really fine. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand why you don't contact Logitech support about the headphones. <laughs> uh, because Not Logitech either. support is real bad. That's true. I know. I was. It was more of a novelty comment reading. I wasn't actually recommending that. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have like twice as many comments, Nick. Maybe he's twice as good as you. Mm, ah, could be. I'm sorry. A little rude. Mm, you're not wrong. Am I right though? No. Mm, could be wrong. Or whenever we whenever right. we say that phrase, you're not wrong. Are we actually saying that that person is right, or are we just? Yeah. It's a double negative, so it's a positive. Hmm. Is it is it that mathematical though, Nick, or is there some meaning behind it? Yeah. No. There's there's actually like proofs you can do to figure that logic out i think both of you guys just need to do go back <laughs> really you're consider not wrong. your options <laughs> you're not wrong. thanks for watching everybody magic the gathering duels of the planeswalkers 2015 mondays and fridays come back oh this go back go go back this is alpaca patrol signing out google back <laughs>